Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, I heard that a lot of you are joining us uh, literally from around the world and around the United States. I'm extremely fired up to be here, so let's go ahead and get airborne. Always love uh, kicking off events like this. At, at the end of the day, folks, or at the end of at least this presentation, uh, tra you're going to recognize trading is a form of combat. When you think about it, there's a winner and there's a loser and I plan on being on the right side of that trade. You're going to say that by the end of this presentation. If you think Wall Street uh, or you know the Chicago and, and the CBO, CBOT, any of those type of places are going to take it easy on you because you're a little mom and pop retail trader out in Poughkeepsie, you're sadly mistaken. Uh, these type of people, folks, after my time uh, on Wall Street, I, I just needed to take a nice long hot shower because they push their own mother out of the way uh, to pick up a buck and they're going to use you as liquidity. So we're going to talk about today how you can even those odds. Uh, as Dan said, my name is Matthew Buckley. Uh, going forward, since we all just met, you can call me Wiz. Uh, my parents did in fact love me, so that's not my uh, God-given uh, name. Uh, I earned that uh, name, uh, or it's, it's a call sign, Flying Fighters for the United States Navy. And let's just say that nobody uh, flying fighter jets is running around out there with Gucci call signs like Iceman or you know Wolfman. Let's just say that some of us go out and earn our call sign, and it's usually by doing something stupid. So I'm whiz and I'll take no questions about how I earned my call sign, but I flew the Hornet for 15 years for the United States Navy, graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School, which many of you know is Top Gun, and I also flew 44 combat sorties uh, over Iraq. Uh, as a young lieutenant learning how to fly the F-18 Hornet, I taught myself how to trade equity options. This was in the early 90s. Uh, way before Al Gore invented the internet. So I actually had to grab books uh, on options and stocks and, and taught myself how to do this. And something interesting came about. I really did recognize after I started trading that I should be using the same methodologies that I was learning flying a fighter aircraft, having a strategy, implementing tactics, managing risk, contingency planning, knowing when to get out of a bad situation uh, before it gets even worse. And it worked extremely, extremely well. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, uh, Scott. I appreciate that. Uh, Memorial Day is always a, uh, a pretty tough day. In 15 years, I buried uh, 11 uh, of my best friends. Uh, so uh, it's not a day for barbecues or uh, the beach for a guy like me, but I appreciate that. Um, so what was interesting, uh, after I got out of uh, the Navy, I also applied what I learned flying fighters to the business world. I became an executive consultant to Fortune 500 companies. Same type of idea. Most countries, uh, companies don't know what they're doing for lunch, let alone uh, a year from now, three years from now, what their vision is, what's their strategy to get there, holding people accountable, developing leaders, debriefing, planning briefing, executing, defeating task saturation that hits all of their employees. And I had an absolute blast, even wrote a book about it uh, called From Sea Level to Sea Level. What's this have to do with trading? Well, I was, like I said, still trading options uh, on, you know, as I was doing all this stuff. And look at the companies, uh, a sampling, just a sampling of the companies that I worked with uh, over the past 12 years doing my uh, consulting. Look at those industries, agro, oil, technology, biotech, finance, uh, autos. Folks, now for all the attorneys in the audience, uh, let's clear this up right away. I'm a fiduciary to these companies. I'll be in Dallas next week actually uh, speaking to one of the largest uh, power uh, companies in the world, Schneider Electric. Uh, so I can't, uh, I can't tell you what's going on in these companies, anything about them. I don't trade in these names. I can't trade in these names. It's first of all wrong, second of all illegal. Uh, which to me, wrong is more important than illegal. Uh, but here's what it does do. It gives all the traders and investors at Top Gun Options uh, an insight because I have what we call SA, Sierra Alpha, situational awareness as to what's going on in these sectors before the, any of those idiots on Comedy Central. If you're getting your financial news from CNBC, it's late. You're the last one to know, as a matter of fact. You might as well trade in the opposite direction if you're waiting for a guy with, a, with an air bell uh, or, or you know, an air horn and a cowbell to give you stock advice. So the folks at TGO know what's going on in these industries, who's hiring, who's firing, who's acquiring. I know what's going on in the economy and the market before analysts at Stevie Cohen's SAC Capital know what's going on. 
people pay a lot of money for access to the type of information that I have, but I don't give that type of information because it's illegal. But we'll have situational awareness. Okay? So during my consulting, I actually popped up on the radar of one of the largest volatility arbitrage firms in the United States. You see those big vertical windows right there? That's the intersection of Jackson and LaSalle. That's the Chicago Board of Trade. That's Peak Six Investments, the largest vol arb firm uh, in the world. Had an absolute blast. I was their managing director of strategy. Uh, we started a hedge fund. We actually started a retail broker. Uh, that many of you have heard of or might trade with, Options House, and uh, just had an absolute blast. Now, I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you if I felt like Valentine in trading places. Uh, I mean, <laughs> me coming from the Navy and, and doing business consulting to uh, helping to run uh, a vol arb firm completely felt like a fish out of water, but you'd be surprised uh, about how much you know, uh, maybe even more than the folks uh, in places uh, like this. So that's me. Two and a half billion dollar firm. Uh, after I was a managing director of strategy, they turned me loose, and I became the founder and CEO of the Options News Network, ONN.TV. Many of you have heard of that. I hosted about four of the shows that we did every day uh, on the floor of the CBO and the CBOT, and had an absolute blast, and grew it from me to about eighty thousand of you uh, in a little under a year. I, it was it was awesome. But then I decided to uh, that Chicago winners were best left for people other than me and moved down here to beautiful South Florida where I am today in uh, Boca Raton, uh, Florida. And that's one of my most important jobs right there. Uh, father of uh, three uh, just awesome uh, kids. All right, <clears throat> let's get airborne. As Dan said, uh, throughout the day today, you're going to want to take a lot of notes. He does uh, have a lot of great 500-pound uh, uh, heads lined up, so I'd be taking some notes, and I'm probably going to hang around and listen to these guys as well. Why you always want to be accelerating your learning. Top Gun Options. Six years of service, we train, we don't educate. If you hear the word financial education or we educate today, run as fast as you can. Uh, the world is full of educated derelicts and most of them are in safe spaces sucking on their thumbs. Training gives you a skill. Fighter pilots are trained, doctors are trained, uh, plumbers are trained. Okay, we've trained thousands of investors and traders of all experience levels, from marine buddies who can't even spell the word options up to Jedi masters. And the methodologies, some of which you're just going to see a sampling of this morning, are all combat tested and Wall Street proven. And we use that demo do methodology from the military. I'm going to demonstrate something to you. You're going to do it. Okay, real quick before we get into our methodologies and take a look at the trading platform as the market gets open, so we can take a look at some real trades. Our year-to-date performance. Take a look at this. This isn't my year-to-date performance. <laughs> Trust me, you'll see this in a second. This is uh, a lot of people sit there and say, "Oh, hedge funds. You know, I, I want to be in a hedge fund. The average hedge fund is down about a percent year-to-date. It was about a half a percent uh, before the uh, the month closed yesterday. Now they're starting to estimate that it's a full, nearly a full percent down. And their best year was a couple years ago uh, with uh, 11 percent. I mean." Don't sit here and say, oh, man, I, I wish I was in a hedge fund. No, you don't. You're paying a fee, a 2 and 20 fee, to some guy who doesn't need another house in the Hamptons, okay? Why? You can do it yourself. One of the portfolios you're going to get access to or see today, uh, and especially when you join, is our urgent alert and weekly options. So uh, I, I heard Dan ask uh, people what they like to trade, and a couple of you said weekly options. Well, welcome aboard because we trade weekly options, and we do it extremely well. Uh, we have a couple trades on this holiday shortened week. Uh, $43,000 uh, year-to-date return on risk. Okay, uh, These are $100,000 model portfolios. Now, for those of you who just said, well, I don't have 100 grand, that's not the point. Some traders and folks at TGO have a uh, $100 million. Some people have a grand. It doesn't matter. Uh, they just change their contract size. If I'm trading uh, you know, 15 contracts and risking $5,000, maybe... Uh, Somebody trades three contracts. Uh, so $100,000 is just an average uh, portfolio size, so that's why we picked that. Okay, $100,000, nice uh, round numbers. John, not even close. That's not even close to how I'm sounding. You know what I have done, John? I've been a complete idiot at times throughout my options career as a retail trader, and I learned. You know what we do in the military, John? We debrief, and we get better and we accelerate our performance. We don't repeat mistakes. So I'm not trying to sound, uh, quote, better than anybody else. I'm telling you, I've been there. I've done that. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a couple minutes, why our experience is a little bit uh, better. 
So appreciate you uh, you saying that. Uh, but if, if that's how you feel, certainly uh, can respect it. Our primary model portfolio is up about 28,000 at 28,500 uh, year to date, and that's about a 102% return uh, on risk. So we're having a, a great time trading here year to date. Those are year to date numbers here at TGO. Okay, and again, they're based on a $100,000 model portfolio. Here's our methodology. Okay, it's not rocket surgery. S O T, strategic operational and tactical. What do I mean by this? Out of the thousands of traders uh, I, I bet have uh, registered for today, you're very, very tactical. Just like that, those businesses I talked about. You don't know what you're doing uh, trading you know, uh, two years out from now, let alone this week or maybe in the front month. You're very tactical. You wake up, put on your bunny slippers, have your cup of coffee, turn on CNBC and look at a guy you know, in a nice suit talking about Tesla. Oh, that, that guy! That guy sounds like he knows what he's talking about. And then you put a Tesla trade on, and two weeks later, you're broke. That just that's that's very very short sighted and tactical. You didn't do your intelligence gathering. You didn't do everything that I'm going to teach you that we do here uh, at TGO. Okay. What we do, and I'm going to show you here in a little bit live in the market is uh, SOT. We're going to do every live trade brief you attend with me, and we do about four of them throughout the week, is a strategic brief for about 15 minutes. We're going to take a look at what's going on around the globe. Hey, what happened with the uh, PMI in China last night? Anybody know? How about what happened with uh, go uh, uh, Governor Kuroda, uh, his advice to Prime Minister Abe in, uh, in Japan? They delayed the sales tax. All these things, when we wake up and the future is a little bit red, most of you scratch your head and go, what the hell's going on? The market was up yesterday type of thing. Well, things happen around the globe, whether it's economically, politically, or militarily. Okay. After about a 15-minute strategic brief, then we get operational. Think of yourself as a general or an admiral, Okay, and I'm a young lieutenant. I will brief you on what's going on around the globe, then what's going on in the United States. So you just sit there with your cup of coffee and your cigar with your boots up on the table. What's going on in the United States? How are the futures looking? What's uh, Ms. Yelling saying or her Fed lieutenant saying about a potential interest rate increase? How did durable goods do? What was the Chicago PMI yesterday? Uh, vehicle sales throughout the day today. We're going to brief operationally one level underneath strategic. What's going on domestically? And now, only now, ladies and gentlemen, can we talk about potential trades? Does that make sense to everybody? If you do it upside down, meaning uh, I put a trade on, uh oh, I better see what's going on here in the United States. Whoops, whoa, why are our futures down triple digits? Oh, China, you know, their GDP imploded. Ah, crap, I didn't know about that. Exactly. Stop being a tactical trader and do it this way. I'm telling you, it works in combat and it works in air trading here at TGO. I just showed you the results. At the end of the day, somebody's going to win in a trade and somebody isn't. Which side do you want to be on? Well, I'm not even going to let you answer that because I know. Now, here I'm going to go through a seven-step trade plan. And this is worth the price of admission right here, folks, because I, I, I literally travel around the country and around the globe. Uh, and I bump into people, oh, I'm a trader. I'd, you know, one of the things that I hear from all these guys is that I need a trade plan. And then they keep talking and never give the trade plan. Well, here it is. And I'm going to give it to you, and it's for free. You can take a little, uh, at the top of your screen, I think there's a little camera-looking icon. You can click on that and take a screenshot of this stuff as we go, because uh, this is uh, yours to keep. Here's your seven-step trade plan, and we're going to go through every one of these steps. Okay. Step one, determine your strategic mindset. Step two, identify your target. Step three, Develop your commit criteria. Step four, select your tactic. What the hell's a tactic? You're going to find out in a second. Five, tactical employment. Six, mid-course guidance. And seven, how are we getting out of this thing with an exit plan? Here we go, step one. Strategic mindset. You can only be one of four things. You can be bullish, which is self-explanatory. You can be bearish. Duh. You can think the market's going to be volatile. We're going to be all over the place. Or neutral. 
I think we're just chopping sideways for a little bit looking for direction, okay? And then obviously you can have variations, right? I am cautiously bullish. I am very bearish. I'm extremely volatile, and not meaning me because I haven't had uh, too much coffee. Uh, let me get a quick check from you all. Looking at that chart of the S&P 500, this is right before the market opened today, give me your strategic mindset. Let me see what your strategic mindset is, you personally. Let me look at some of these because this will be interesting. A question mark, Abe, <laughs> that's good. Kent is bearish. Susanna, neutral. Benoit uh, is bearish. Mark is bearish. Kale, above the 200-day, bullish. Roger is a B. I don't know if that's bullish, bearish. Bearish. Bullish, cautiously bearish, going to go long, George. Cautious bull, neutral, Gary. Bull, Fernando, bullish. Patrick, bearish. Lowry, okay. Greg Potts, cautiously bullish. Awesome. Love the answers. I'm going to give you what the right answer is. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get in the market and, and look at a potential trade, but it I wanted to read those off to show you how varied uh, we got everything. Wayne, no idea. Bertrand, bullish. Bearish on an outside day, MC. I got every answer. I got a volatile in there. I got there was a lot of uh, bearish. There was a lot of cautiously bullish. There was everybody all over the place. John is neutral. We had a couple neutrals as well. So we're going to take a look uh, when we get into the uh, market here in a couple minutes. With us being up here at December highs uh, back here and whether or not we're going to roll over. We're down a little today. The futures uh, were down. Uh, we might see another triple digit down day and we might be heading for a little bit of... We knew we were going to take a break. This was a little much, to be honest with you, um, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Just wanted to show you what all of your, your squadron mates are thinking here today, and people can be all over the place. Manu, uh, yesterday was outside day with correction due. Hmm, we'll see. Okay, step two in our trade plan. So everybody has their strategic mindset right now. Step two, here's what I want you to do. Identify, identify the target. What's the target that you want to trade? The target is the stock, uh, the ETF, or the index, okay? So step two, let's identify the target. I'm cautiously bullish, and here's what I want to target. Stock, the stock, the ETF, or the index. I trade uh, indices all day long over ETFs if I can, if there is an index for it. Why? Tax treatment. If you have no idea what I'm saying, I just saved you some money, and you can buy me a beer someday. Google it. Uh, there's a significant difference in tax treatment between tr trading an index and trading an ETF. And if you didn't know that, uh, you're welcome. Step three. Okay, if you've been sitting here sipping on your coffee, kind of nodding your head, sit up in your chair because you have to listen to this step. It is absolutely critical. Step three is what we call commit criteria. Remember, folks, this is a trade plan. We haven't even gotten airborne yet. Most of you just squeeze a trigger on a missile and, and, and put a trade down range without doing any of this. This is the most important step, one of the most important steps. You ready? Correct, Albert. 60-40 rule for taxes. Why am I committing capital to this trade? Why am I in this trade? Again, as I travel around, I bump into people, oh, I trade too, uh, man. Uh, you know, I'm in this uh, trade on Amazon. Why? Uh, I, I don't know. Well, I'm an Amazon Prime member, and I like it. That's one of the dumbest things I've heard. Why are you committing capital to this trade? Why, why are you in it? And here's what I need. I need three to five sentences that you can rattle off in the blink of an eye. How many? I call it the cocktail party pitch. Or if any of you have been in sales, we've got hundreds and hundreds of traders in here. I'll bet some of you have been in sales in your life. Have you ever had to do that elevator pitch, it's called? All right, we just got on the elevator together on the 30th floor. We're both going to the ground floor. Go. You got to sell me. You got to give me three to five sentences while you're in this trade. And I challenge everybody today, not today while the, the investing event's going on, maybe afterwards. I want you to open your computer and look at every position in your portfolio 
And when you stare at it and go, okay, that's that position, give your, what's the commit criteria? If you can't, maybe within a second or two, immediately rattle off five, four or five sentences while you're in that trade, why are you in that trade? I see a lot of people fumble around for minutes trying to come up with this. That's awful. This is your money, folks. This comes from the military. Why are we committing our F-18s to these uh, enemy MiGs 80 miles away? That's my body, man. Yeah, it's a $60 million airplane, but it's me in it. Why am I committing potentially my life to this? It has to hit certain criteria. Here's the... I told you this is the, one of the biggest steps. Here's the biggest part of the biggest step. If at any time during the life of this trade your commit criteria change, get out of it or adjust the trade. Now, I, I, I saw about 500 light bulbs pop on. Doesn't that... I, so many of you have a trade on I have this trade on Apple. Why? Uh, can't give me the commit criteria, but you, f you fumble through it. I got an iPhone. Uh, I think the down channel sales are starting to pick up. China's big, and Tim Cook went to India, and I think that's a big market. All right, I'll give you a C plus on that. And then three weeks later, some of that changes. Down channel sales are actually sharply lower. They delayed uh, an their India push uh, by another year. And what do you do as the stock goes down? nothing you sit there and you hope or you sit there and you say ah, Apple's gonna come back Apple doesn't hate me come on it's me Apple doesn't care who you are and Apple would steamroll over you and your entire family who are you they don't care folks look at the top left of that slide discipline Get out of the trade or adjust it if your commit criteria change. Please, I'm begging you. Not if you don't sign it with TGO or whatever. I, you know, I, I wish you well. At least try this. At least do this in your. I, I get emails after events like this from a lot of people who are like, "Hey, man, I did that exercise and I was not happy with myself." Well, you're welcome. Okay. Now, step four. You ready for this? This is the tactic. Now, for all of you options traders out there, or folks who want to trade options here at Top Gun, it is not a strategy. And I, what are you talking about? I love iron condors. They're my favorite strategy. You're wrong. And to John's well, you sound like you know what you're talking about. I do. An iron condor, a broken wing butterfly, cash secured puts, a vertical spreads, those are not strategies, folks. Those are tactics. A strategy is high level. A strategy is winning the war against ISIL, saving for college, managing risk, short-term income generation, buying a boat in six months. Those are financial strategies, so if you know what an iron condor is? A tactic. A tactic supports a strategy. I will take credit for one big thing in my career, and that is changing that word in a four-block radius around the Chicago Board of Trade. Now I hear repeated back to me on some of these type of things. Well, this options tactic, I'm like, I know who did that, and it was me. Don't ever call the strategy again. How do you select the tactic, what you're, how, what you're gonna trade? Well, you have your strategic mindset, cautiously bullish, and you gave me your commit criteria on Apple. That's what we do, now let's pick the trade, right? It's a bull put spread, an iron condor, a long call diagonal, whatever it is. And remember, folks, this. Options trading isn't tough at all, okay? I know people sit there. I think in the early 80s when they came out with calls, it was a bunch of white dudes in the back room smoking cigars. They tried to make it sound really crazy to keep people away. i got to be honest with you. It, I'm a political science major and a knuckle-dragging aviator. I can do it. You can do it. If you know that buying a call is bullish and buying a put is bearish, welcome aboard. Okay, step five. Tactical employment. How are we going to lose the trade? Uh, employ the trade. So let's say I do pick that iron condor that you like as a tactic. Well, it's got a couple legs, right? It's got a bear call spread and a and a bull put spread. And here's the price that I'm going to try and get filled on from mid market. Folks, before we employ anything tactically, a trade or a weapon, we need to know the details. How are we going to place this trade? 
How's, how are we going to put it on? Step six. Once we got this thing airborne, now we, we need to talk about how we're going to management. And again, folks, we're still in a plan stage. I haven't launched anything. But we talk about what we're going to do when this thing's airborne before we do it, right? This is where I ask, what if? What if Apple goes up? What if Apple goes down? What if it goes up and um, I'm up a 90% profit in three days out of the blue? Many of you sit there, I, I'll, I'll ask you, hey, Wiz, I'm, I'm making so much money on this Apple trade, it's up like 120%. Okay, when are you getting out? What do you mean? I, I want more money. Well, pigs get slaughtered. When are you getting out? You should have had a profit target picked. <clears throat> Same thing to the downside. What if it goes down? What's my adjust criteria? If this trade moves against me, what are we going to do? Do you have a trade SOP? We do. We know at Topkin Options, before we place any trade, as we go through this checklist, when we're going to adjust the trade. If the let, Let's say I'm, I'm trading a credit spread, and I lost half the credit that I took in. At, you know what? might be time to adjust this trade. Why is Apple going down, and why is it going against me? I'm going to roll it down a little bit and out the next week. What about my eject? Oh, man. I just woke up this morning, and this trade, I lost 100% of the credit that I took in. Eject. Get out of the airplane. Don't sit there and stare at it. Get out. Give the jet back to the taxpayers. Okay? Greg, when do I eject? If it's a credit spread, 100% of the credit that I took in. And we'll talk about that live here in the market in about three minutes. Okay? I tend to eject if I lose 100% of the credit that I took in. It's, 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 that's enough. Okay? And then finally, folks, step seven. This is his step. This is General Powell's step. But, but why General Powell? Hey, President Bush, the first, came to him and said, hey, get Iraq out of Kuwait. And he said, I can do that, sir. But, but hold on before you leave. When do we declare victory? When do we get out? You need to know when you are getting out of something before you ever get into it. How many of you, and I won't read your names, <laughs> how many, I, I want to know. Let's be honest. This is it. Uh, you will get nothing but open and honest from me, as hopefully you're, you, you can tell here. Uh, first of all, it's the way I was raised. Second of all, uh, as a naval officer, the, um, how many of you have had a credit spread on? And you're up 90% in this trade, 1800 bucks, let's say. 90%, 1800 bucks. Man, it's a, there's $2,200. It's $2,200 potentially. I, I can make another 400 bucks in another week. I'm just going to let this thing expire worthless. And then the next day you wake up, and the CEO's on his own airplane to the Caymans with a briefcase full of cash from the company. Uh, or something else happens, and you turn a 90% winning trade into a 100% loser. Yep, yep, <laughs> credit spread, Amazon, been there with a sad face. I always take it off the week before. This is one of my biggest problems. Okay, well, you will sign up for TGO. Never traded a credit spread. I'm going to hook you up and we're going to trade credit spreads because you get theta, you get time decay. Excellent. Okay, well, a lot of people are being honest right now. That's one of your biggest problems. Whoever said that this is one of your biggest problems, it's one of your, your biggest problems is because you're not staying disciplined or you, you haven't thought about when you're going to get before you get in. If there is an 8 or a 9 in front of a percentage sign in one of my trades, I'm out. I, I, I know of no person on God's green earth that has gone broke taking a profit at 80 or 90 percent. Does anybody? Anybody? Give me their name and address because I'd like to meet them. Johnny, if you need to learn how to do a credit trade, I'm going to show you in a couple minutes, and you need to sign up with us. Okay, so when you hit your max acceptable loss, get out. Do it. That's the discipline. And also when you hit your max acceptable profit. Some people do a halfway decent job at going, uh-oh, this is going against me, and maybe I should get out. But not really. I'll be honest with you. I'm just being nice to those of you who maybe think that way but don't actually do it. But people are awful about taking profits. 
you're so happy, right? I'm making money. I'm making money on this trade. Look at me. And then the next day you're broke. I will be brutally honest with you when I say this. I have zero sympathy for you. I have none. You see this book right here? Let me go back. See this manual? And I forget the whatever his name was, John. Um, this thing is written in blood. Okay? This thing is written in blood. You see this section, section 5, emergency procedures? When the F-18 went off the flight line for the first time in St. Louis, I don't know, in the early 80s, I think the emergency procedures section had about four pages in it. It was just, you know, the engineers going, ah, these things could go wrong, try this. Now, folks, the emergency procedures section is over 90 pages in this manual. Why? Because it's written in blood. Somebody went out and did something stupid, or the jet did something stupid, or whatever happened, it's like, whoops, let's add a procedure for that. So uh, if it quotes to John, oh, it sounds like you know everything, I don't. I wasn't born that way, man. I learned from other people, and that's what I'm here to do for you. And all the, the thousands of folks we have at, uh, at Topkin Options are doing the same thing. They're standing on the shoulders of other traders uh, who didn't do this, who didn't get out of the airplane and give the jet back to the taxpayers when they should have. That guy, that Canadian Hornet pilot right there, his neck, I'm, I'm sure, is hurting him. But he lived to fight another day. He knew that when that jet rolled sideways at a couple hundred feet during air show practice after an engine failed, you see that engine up here? This one's producing thrust, that one ain't. When you're at low altitude and your jet rolls upside down like that, there's only one thing you do. He made that decision. When do you think he made that decision? When that happened? They calculated if he had waited literally half a blink of an eye, he would have hit the dirt, the, he would have ejected into the runway. He wouldn't have he wouldn't have felt his hurt neck. He there wouldn't have been a neck. Okay, so let's get airborne. It's time to start trading here. Exactly, Johnny. That is when he made that decision back in the brief. That's why I just gave you a trade plan. It's not a call. It's not called what a trade execution. There is there is no such thing. If you have a good plan. Once you run into battle, even though the bullets start firing, you know, the fog of trading or the fog of combat starts seeping in, at least you have a plan to deviate from. Many of you guys and, and gals, women, sorry, I don't know if gals is appropriate, uh, it, it's like you get airdropped into the middle of Afghanistan with a rifle when you start trading, and you land, take your parachute off, and look around and go, okay, now what do I do? That's awful, and I'm going to help you out with that. All right. Here's the acronym before we take a look at my trading platform I want you to write down. To fear 2016. Okay. So this is the areas. There's one area where I'm not trading in this acronym, uh, and you'll know right away. And all the others we have trades on or are impacting the markets. The T in uh, to fear is uh, terrorism. Unfortunately, uh, terrorism is going to impact this market, not as bad as we thought in the past, uh, which is scary. Here's what I mean. And I, uh, I heard Dan ask where everybody's from, and somebody was from Belgium. Uh, and you have uh, abs uh, absolutely my condolences uh, for, the, for the attacks uh, you all went through. Uh, Paris, San Bernardino, our own uh, terrorist attack on our own soil that the president wanted to talk more about gun control than about ISIS and uh, radical Islam. Well, hell, he's not even allowed to say radical Islam. Um, but I digress. Terrorism. There's a big one coming. One of the benefits, or maybe not, it depends on how you look at it, that you get from Topkin Options uh, is that I have a lot of access to uh, buddies of mine who are still uh, in the military, uh, up there in rank, and kind of know what's going on. So I, you, will, you will hear what you will not hear uh, from your uh, selected news station. Albert, trade weekly options all the time. I have two weekly options trades on right now on the S&P 500 and Facebook uh, that expire on Friday. I have to keep an eye on Facebook because it's a little lower, uh, but as long as we stay above, uh, what was it, 118? We'll, we'll talk about that. The O in to fear is oil. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past, uh, what, this year and also the beginning of last year, we had the same thing, folks. Do you remember that? Being in the last year, 
Oil's been whipping this market around as well. Oversupply, undersupply. Uh, we're all going to have a meeting in Doha. Wait, the Iranians ain't showing up because they're. I love the Iranians. Uh, hey, we just got the sanctions lifted, folks. After years, we ain't doing. We're, we ain't cutting anything. Matter of fact, we're going to open every spigot and every oil field in Iran and flood the market with oil because we need the money to fund terrorism. But that's another story. Um, oil. Okay, there's going to be a lot of, hey, whiz, oil's close to 50 or hovering around 50 now. Everything's okay. No, it's not. Oil could go to 100 tomorrow, and there's still going to be a lot of problems, and here's why. With oil as low as it was for so long, how many of you know about a lot of bankruptcies in the oil services industry? How many of you know that Schlumberger, Halliburton, Weatherford, all these other mid-level oil companies have laid off tens of thousands of people, Houston, Baton Rouge, uh, Nebraska, the oil industry, it's so stupid, these, these, these guys on CNBC that are like, ah, well, you know, the, the oil, low gas prices help consumers, it's dumb. Your little $25 every other week, quote, savings at the pump is not going to negate some guy, guy who lost his $100,000 a year job who was a roughneck out in Midland, Texas. It's stupid. That loss of a $100,000 job, the loss of his house, the real estate market where he used to eat, that's a big deal. So uh, uh, I don't want to drop anchor on all this stuff. We cover all this, but it, it just it, it shakes my head when they have um, people, uh, just not the smartest people in the world. F interferes the Fed. Obviously, uh, a couple of Fed lieutenants went out a week and a half ago and said, hey, market, I don't know what you guys are looking at, but we might raise in June. We had a temper tantrum and freaked out a little bit uh, and then kind of settled into, eh, all right, we might be okay with it, and uh, we started going up again. We'll talk about the Fed a little bit more. E is Europe. What do we care about Europe? We do care about Europe. Mario Draghi and the ECB lowering interest rates, doing their own quantitative easing with bond buying. Uh, a potential Brexit coming up, would, which would devastate world markets, in my opinion. I think they should do it, but uh, I'll leave my opinion out of it. So we, we look at Europe. A is Asia. Look at China last night. People always, uh, what was the China PMI uh, last night? Yeah, we have to care. That thing will, that, that rolls across the Pacific. That rolls across the Pacific, uh, and if China's slowing down any worse than we know that they're slowing down, we're in a lot of trouble. But I will tell you that the Chinese are in this for the long haul. Our markets, we're, we look at it second to second, like what's the Fed doing? China's like, just relax. they're in it for like a thousand years, man. They, they take their, they're taking their time. And there will never be a Bear Stearns or Lehman Brothers moment in China. I disagree with that, blah, blah. Well, here's, I, I'm, I know I'm right. You know why? You'll never know about it. There might be that moment, but you'll never know because their government, as you know, ain't going to let any financial buffoonery be seen really of that scale. And they have shown that they're willing to throw the kitchen sink, the house, and the neighborhood at their markets and economy from starting literally a currency war with devaluing their yuan to you can't sell stock short. You can't. I mean, they, they, they even arrested uh, approximately 200 financial journalists for, quote, spreading financial rumor mongering or whatever it was. When you can dictate policy, fiscal policy, at the barrel of a gun, usually things happen. <laughs> and that brings us to R before we get trading here, Russia. I wear two suits at Top Gun Options. One's a flight suit and one's a Gordon Gecko business suit. Here's what I mean. I'm long-term bullish on Russia. It makes my skin crawl to say that. I'm long-term bullish on China, and it makes my skin crawl to say that. But that's, that's the Gordon Gecko in me. I don't care what's going on in the world. I am going to try and make money, and even if it's off the stupidity of others. or I put my flight suit on, and I was trained to fight these people. But as a portfolio manager, that ain't my job, man. My job is to produce some serious profits, as I showed you with our performance. Does everybody understand that? So I'll give you a little bit of taste of, uh, of what I personally feel about this trade. But at the end of the day, I am Michael Douglas, man. Greed is good. Salim, <laughs> Salim said, well said, exclamation point. Thank you. But it, it's literally how I trade, folks. It's uh, 
sometimes it's tough, uh, but you have got to be bullish on uh, on Putin. Putin 2016. I mean, the guy, you got to be bullish on a guy, a world leader, who does whatever he wants. Now, we'll talk about a beer, about what happened in Ukraine and Crimea. It was a national embarrassment. I, I agree with John McCain. We sent him blankets and meals ready to eat, MREs. And the president wouldn't even let those supplies fly in on United States Air Force jets. He sent them in on commercial air jets. He didn't want to offend Putin. How can you offend? How can you? How can you offend this guy anymore? He shot down an airliner. Ugh, whatever. All right, we got to get airborne and look at some uh, uh, trades here, man. But anyway, so use that acronym. Look in those areas. Obviously, not terrorism, but you should be hedged, shouldn't you? Because something. Uh, uh, I'll leave it at this. Something bad is a coming, and it's probably before the end of the year here in the United States. I'll leave it at that, and it ain't going to be – I'll leave it at that. I don't want to scare anybody, but let's just say I, I got a lot of friends whose business it is it is to be in that business of, you know, <sighs> predicting what's going to happen. Okay, so here is the primary live trade brief uh, model portfolio, um, and one of the things that I don't – I should have shown you the other one that would have a big blinding green in it and I picked the wrong one to show you today as the market's down a little bit. Um, one of the things that I don't like about this portfolio is what? Can anybody tell me what should be blindingly green right now? Real quick though, here's our positions in uh, – I'm not going to tell you the exact positions because that's what you pay for, but Apple, AIG, uh, Japan, Brazil, Facebook, China, Gold, Morgan Stanley, Nike, Russia, Energy, Financials, Technology, and Consumer Staples. What should I have in this portfolio that I don't? JV, would be good to learn more about your friend's views if time allows. JV, uh, tell me where you live and, and maybe I'm giving a speech there. I don't want to scare the hell out of everybody, but my it's the job of the Pentagon and certain areas of the Pentagon to contingency plan against the worst case scenarios. And if we can think it, they're thinking it. I'll leave it at that. Uh, indexes versus ETF, oil, bonds, indexes, US dollar cash, financials. No, I got financials in there. What am I missing in here? You ready for this? And it's not going to be sexy. Um, no, Jim, that's, that's not right. That's not that number. And you can look over here. That's some uh, weighted performance portfolio thing that uh, Trade Monster or Options House does, and it's broken. It doesn't work. Benoit is close. That's exactly right. Because uh, here's year to date, uh, and then we can go from inception. This portfolio has been around for five years. Started with 100 grand. So, uh, no, Benoit, folks, what should be really, really green on a day like today? A hedge. Folks, you need to have positions in your portfolio that do what? That go up on days like today. I have gold, Bertrand. Manu's getting there. Not, uh, I, I, I'm not a big utilities guy. I, uh, for that type of hedge, I have uh, consumer uh, staples, right? The consumer staples uh, is a good hedge. No, 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 folks. Let's take a look at this. And I, I didn't think I was going to talk this way because I wanted to put a bull put spread on um, uh, on the market here, S&P 500. Uh, but look at this. The volatility – look at the VIX, folks, the volatility index. Okay? The uh, Write this down. When vol is cheap, you buy it. Look at how cheap vol was for the past couple weeks uh, or, or actually the past week. As the market rallied, what did vol do? Write this down. When vol is cheap, you buy it. When it's expensive, you sell it. What's that mean? Okay, well, vol around 16 for the past two and a half months is expensive. And what's happened every time it hit there? Remember, folks, the volatility index is not a stock. It's not, you know, Facebook that's doing this. It doesn't go up. It goes up when the market freaks out, and then it goes down when the market's done 
having its freak out, its temper tantrum. So guess what? We're having a little bit of a temper tantrum right now, aren't we? Uh, if you're going to trade any volatility outside of about 30 days, maybe go over to the, I know somebody put UVIXI and all that stuff. Look at this. Look at this slide for life here. With the VXX below 13, in my opinion, I would get long uh, vol easily. Again, one more time I'm going to say this. When vol is cheap, you buy it. When it's expensive, you sell it. Okay? Write that down. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a second or two, but that's, that's, a, that's a whizism. I've given you a lot of whizisms, right? Here's one about interest rates that you can write down because some people don't understand interest rate increases and stuff. Here's uh, write it down. When interest rates are high, stocks will die. When interest rates are low, stocks will grow. Okay? Interest rates are high, stocks will die. Interest rates are low, stocks will grow. Okay? Now, real quick, I, I, I neglected to do this. Uh, I went straight to tactical trading. But um, like I said, uh, the China PMI numbers uh, were not good. Uh, Japan delayed their sales tax hike. If you remember, or you trade, I, I trade the EWJ, I trade Japan. Um, if you remember that they were supposed to have this uh, tax hike, or they had one about a year, year and a half ago, and it wasn't uh, pleasant on the market. The market kind of weighed um, okay, or maybe was going to do okay with it. Now, Prime Minister Abe say, no, we're going to delay that. And any fiscal reform, we're going to delay that too. That's actually um, bullish. BlackRock downgrades global stocks, citing valuations. Folks, we are way over our ski tips here. Okay, I agree with BlackRock. Okay, I think I am. Uh, so all of this was cautiously. Uh, you can watch uh, our recordings after you sign up today of the past couple weeks. Up through here, I said I am cautiously bullish, and once we got right around even here, I said, eh, I said we're getting hypoxic up here. We're running out of air. There's no, who's buying right now? It ain't me. It ain't hedge. I'm also the chief development, chief development officer for a hedge fund. Neglected to tell you that. Um, and we're starting, we're probably going to take a break or maybe roll over. So I am not, uh, I, I am moderately bearish. There's my variation. Okay, I was cautiously bullish. I am moderately bearish. I don't think this is the big one I, uh, to, to steal us. Fred Sanford, uh, I definitely think we hold this 200-day, uh, 200-day, uh, 50-day uh, moving average. Okay, but BlackRock, hey man, known to be full of a lot of smart guys. Uh, hey, uh, we talked about the Fed. Stocks fell yesterday, but uh, they did have a winning May. I just want to make sure uh, I don't want to miss anything. Before. I like I said, I do a 15-minute brief. Uh, strategically and 15 operationally. I just want to. I'm doing a live trading session at one o'clock with my some of my subscribers. So I just want to make sure I'm not missing uh, anything. Oil price forecast get more bullish. The, the corporate debt. <laughs> Buying here is like penny uh, picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Ten reasons to be bearish from Credit Suisse. Uh, this is a good one too. Um, we got the jobs report. We just started getting data. Nah, it's okay. I'll, I'll jump into the trading. So, like I said, I am moderately uh, bearish. I'd like to have a hedge on, but I also, I don't think we go below this 200-day, uh, damn it, blue, 50, 50-day 50 moving average. I didn't have my second cup of coffee. That's, that's why. Lamont, exactly, Mike. Uh, so, let's get back to our trading platform. Let's start with, with, uh, I 
I, I didn't want to start with a hedge. I'd rather start with a with a regular trade, and then maybe if if I don't run out of time here, we can take a look at a, a hedge. So the the 50-day moving average is 2068. Okay, uh, 2068. Uh, Sandeep, I think we will have a bullish run till Fed meeting June 14th. After June 19th, it will be bearish. So you're saying that we're going to start back up here and then uh, sell off. Uh, I I will give you my take. I believe that the 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 Fed decision, if they don't raise interest rates, you know, I, I think we definitely keep going up. Even if we do. Uh, I think it's priced into the market, and it's kind of a in a relief mode now. It's almost like when Ben Bernanke, the old Fed chief, uh, was doing the taper stuff. Okay, so uh, one of us will be right, uh, maybe. But I, I'm uh, uh, that's why I'm moderately bearish here. So I'm going to go. Let's look at 2070. So again, I trade the S&P 500. I just gave you my strategic mindset. I'm looking at SPX, which is the target. That's step one, step two. Commit criteria. I'm going to commit capitalist trade. I believe the market uh, is overextended after a good week and a half, uh, two-week run. I fully expected the market to pull back. However, I believe the market will stay above the technically important 50-day moving average as we head to a Fed meeting where a Interest rate increase is already priced in. There are no uh, big earnings uh, to note uh, on deck, and I believe that the macroeconomic calendar is uh, calm, especially with jobs coming out last week. Boom. You know what? I didn't even expect. I thought I was going to uh, do the hedge, and I didn't even expect to have that mind uh, commit criteria. So there it is. Okay. Yeah, and you can look at the, the divergence there down here, the MACD. Okay, it's starting to look a little like it's going to uh, diverge, but we'll see. Okay. All right. Let me, uh, where are we? Admiral Stockdale. Who am I? Why am I here? Okay, so let's go out to, I'm going to go out to the, I think there's a fifth. Right? Yeah. Third, tenth. Now let's do the tenth. I'm going out to the tenth. Okay, this is a week and a half long trade. Uh, Johnny, I, I don't. Uh, I was using stock charts as an example. I use the uh, the, the charting stuff all over uh, Trade Monster here. It's Options House. Sorry. I helped build Options House, but they bought Trade Monster, so this isn't the real. I'm not used to it being there. Okay, so let's look at 2070. You bet. 2070. 2070 is right there at the 50-day moving average. I said it correctly instead of the 200-day moving average, so I should get a swig of coffee. Um, but let's. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pad that by about five bucks. I'm gonna pad it by five here. So. What I want to do is a tactic, here's the tactic, called a bull put spread. Bull, obviously, meaning I'm bullish. Put, I'm using puts. And a spread because it's obviously a vertical spread. So I'm going to click Add Edit Legs. Give me one second. I'm going to flop some stuff around here. Okay. I am going to... Well, let's see what the, 20, the 70s are, if we're going to keep selling off a little bit here. 65s. It's not like 25. Um, okay. Manu, don't disagree. All right, I'm going to sell 15. Here's the tactical employment. Man, this guy's using a checklist. Duh. Sell 15 of June 10th. Because I, I, I think uh, any, trading anything outside of this, the market's very, very short-term finicky right now. If you know, if you're going to trade uh, in our today at one o'clock, I have my accelerated retirement uh, webinar every Wednesday at one o'clock. Uh, I trade uh, that portfolio. Um, 
and we trade out to January of 2018. Long-term bullish on Russia, China, Brazil, the financials, uh, cyclicals, technology. So we, the, the, our retirement portfolio is out uh, in time. It's awesome, and it's doing almost as good as my <laughs> short-term portfolios. Um, I'm going to sell 15. Why 15 contracts? You're going to find out in about two minutes. I'm going to sell 15 of next Friday's 2070 puts. That is me saying, hey, market, I don't think you're going to be below 2070 by next Friday. Well, Wiz, I know you sound like you know it all, but what if you're wrong and the market decides to implode through that 50-day uh, moving average? Well, I'm going to show you that I'm going to adjust this trade if it starts to do that, but I'm still going to buy 15 of the 2065 puts. When you buy puts, guess what? You're protected. This 2065, this is our, uh, our, our tourniquet. This is where our bleeding stops. The S&P 500 can go to zero, and I wouldn't care below 2065. I would care below 2065 if it went to zero. You know what I'm saying. I'm protected underneath 2065. So if it decides to smash through that 50-day that, uh, moving average, we'll do it. Now, here's what I want to do, because I'm a little lazy. What's that mean? I'm going to take a screenshot. Why? Because I'm going to send this trade out to my subscribers. Whenever I do a live trading session, SBX61, uh, I, I take a screenshot and I send a text alert out to my subscribers. So they get a text alert and they get a, and screenshots of the trades. Now, I'm going to try for $1.40. It looks like it was bumping around there and we might be under pressure a little bit. Now, you see this analyze button? right here. Here's what I want you to do. You're going to visualize me becoming a Catholic nun right now. You ready? And for those of you who are Catholics, you might understand. When I press that button, I want you to look one place and one place only. And if you don't, I'm going to crack your knuckles. Agreed? Okay, here we go. I want you to look at a sad face. You ready? Right there. Max potential loss. Well, that's stupid, Wiz. I wanted to look up here. I know you did, and that's stupid. Professional traders, the Hornet pilots, this is where we look first. My max potential loss on this trade, based on 15 contracts, is 5400 bucks. Why do I look here first? Because, folks, if I'm not okay with losing 5400 bucks, why the hell would I ever look up here? Don't be the person who you probably are right now that does this. Max profit, two grand in a week and a half, I'm doing this. And then three days from now, the world ends and you lose 5,400 bucks and you're pissed. That's your fault. It ain't my fault. Why 5,400 bucks for me? Again, like I told you, I have what I call trade SOPs, standard operating procedures. One of mine is I don't want to risk more than 5% of my portfolio on any one trade. Why 5%? Why not? I've been doing this for about 25 years, and I found that on a $100,000 portfolio, five grand is the most I want to risk. That's not saying I want to lose that, or I'm okay with losing that. I am okay, but I don't want to. That's what I should have said. So what am I going to do? I'll show you in a couple seconds. However, this is okay with me. I know it's 400 bucks, more than five grand. I get it, but guess what? I'm the skipper. I'm the commanding officer of this portfolio. I manage it. I can do that. I'm okay with being $400 over. Now I can look at me. And remember, folks, some people sit here and go, and it, I have to stress this, so I don't have 100 grand, but I will show you something right now. I am not using all of that haircut, folks. Using about 44 grand. Who, I, I would never use a hundred thousand uh, bucks, folks. Who, who, you should never be fully invested in this market. I have hundred grand. Um, put a hundred grand to work. Nope, half of that's cash. So don't sit here and go, well, I'm not. I can't trade fifty four hundred. But do five contracts. Do five hundred. I don't care. I'm not your financial advisor, and I I can't fly your jet for you. Remember, this fifteen contracts dictates my how much I could potentially lose. Okay? Now I can look at max potential profit. 
obviously it's pretty quick for me. Max loss, boom, boom. Okay, I couldn't look up. That took a little long because I have to explain how we think here how and how I want to teach you to think. I love being a flight instructor, folks. I was a flight instructor for three years. I love seeing light bulbs go on and people going, all right, I get it, and I appreciate that. Max, you pay it forward, folks. You put the ladder down. I don't know how many, my years on Wall Street, people just picked that ladder up, man. And they, as they kept going, they, they, they didn't put that ladder down. Max potential profit, 2100 bucks. With a, all right, using at the money volatility, using vol right now, there's a 66% probability of collecting a full 2100 bucks. What's our break even? Mr. Eh, I'm all right. Right down there, a 67% probability of at least breaking even. Okay. Um, now, you could move the strikes around a little bit maybe if you aren't happy with these probabilities. I'm not a big probability trader. I look at them. Like if this is a 0% probability, <laughs> I'm probably not doing the trade. But I use my strategic mindset. I gave you my strategic mindset and my commit criteria, both of them. And hopefully you sat there and said, okay, I get that. If you, and here's the beauty of, uh, I tell my subscribers during our sessions. If you disagree with that commit criteria and this, take the other side of the trade. Whiz, I don't think we're, I, I think we're going down. Then do a bear put spread, man. I'll show you how to do the opposite trade if you don't agree with me. Okay, now, got to get moving. Uh, I need to take a screenshot because, like I said, I'm a little lazy, and I'm going to use this as uh, my urgent alert for the week. So this is awesome. Why? Because I'm doing a live trading session. Uh, now, something real quick to talk about with this trade. Some of you are debit spread folks, like, and I can't stand that. I don't. When you buy something, when you buy a car and peel out of the parking lot, you lost money the second you cross the threshold. Me, I love being the car dealer. I love selling stuff. I love selling you that car because as soon as you peeled out of that parking lot, I'm making money. We get something called time decay with this trade. You see this down here, theta, time decay? Unched on the day equals time decay. Look at the money, meaning if the S&P is unchanged on the day, what do you get? Time decay. What do you don't get if you're in a debit spread? Well, I think the market's going up and I'm buying a bull call spread. It didn't do anything today. What happened to you? I lost money. Exactly. What happened to me? I made money with a bull put spread because it's time decay. Okay? Now, real quick, and then I got to uh, – I'll, I'll take – there's a ton of questions in there. I'm highlighting this because I need to send out a text alert to my subscribers. Sorry, I'm being selfish, but I'm demonstrating what I do here at TGA, at TGO. Um, uh, SMS. This is a so all of my subscribers. Uh, some are in here. Obviously, I uh, for Winvesting. I wanted them to come and see other uh, pr presenters as well. That's I'm a good wingman. Hey, if somebody could do things better than me. So urgent alerts. Now I'm going to talk about two things real quick. Actually, I don't know. So, new, urgent, wait, urgent alert. UA means urgent alert. That's one of my portfolios. New, SPX, bull, put, spread. And then after I get done talking to you guys in a couple minutes, I'm going to get offline here, and I have to send out the screenshots uh, that I took of the trade. I'm going to do a couple other things for my subscribers as well, but just showing you uh, June 10 expiry. I'm going to buy the 2065 puts. I'm going to sell the 2070 puts at a dollar forty credit. And watch this. Like I told you earlier, I give a range plus or minus ten cents. I'll take a credit of a dollar thirty all the way up to a dollar fifty. I'd adjust this trade if it goes against me and hits two dollars and fifty cents, and I'd eject and get out of this trade. At 280. How did I come up with those numbers? You're going to have to sign up, and and I'll let you know. But that's when I adjust the trade or eject from it, and then I also send out text alerts uh, as well 
and in about three, two, one, on my cell phone, vibrated, there is my text alert. So there you go. Okay. Um, all right, now a lot of good questions in there. What I want to do, give me a couple minutes uh, until I take your, uh, your questions because I want to show you how you can get airborne. We talked about uh, our return and our performance. I'm not going to kill any of that. Oh, that's what I wanted to tell you. Accelerated retirement uh, last month was up 19%. This is our retirement portfolio. <laughs> Um, in a month was up 19%. That's uh, that's pretty cool. A lot of testimonials from people. I'm not going to go through all these. Sorry about that. These are all people who uh, just signed up for full throttle over the past couple months, and they have uh, sent in some uh, some great stuff. I really uh, appreciate it. Um, it is it's it's been awesome. John, I'd like to thank you, Wiz, TGO, and your mentoring. I netted over 15K this month. Uh, thanks for all you do and your team. Folks, hopefully you can recognize that trading is combat. We both use capital. We both have to plan, do our intel gathering, solid tactics that support a strategy, manage risk. We have to contingency plan, and obviously we're going to win. What we have here is called Full Throttle. It's a really, really cool program, and you can you can pick one of three uh, tracks that we call them. And I'll tell you what, let me just go uh, over to the page here that I can, uh, and, and I can show you. And there's three tracks here at Topkin Options. We have an offensive track. What's that mean? Well, you're going to get eight weeks of training about options. And it's on uh, this page right here. Let me, well, here's the link. I think Dan will hook me up by putting it in the, uh, the chat box for you. Uh, you can head to Go, write this down, folks, go.topgunoptions.com slash FTM. That stands for Full Throttle Monthly. Okay, topgunoptions.com slash Full Throttle Monthly. Put a go in front of it, okay? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll answer your questions in a second, folks, because a lot of people are asking how, how you get signed up. So if I have time for the trading questions, I'll a answer them. But obviously, there's a lot of people saying this is pretty cool. Um, so you get eight weeks of uh, options training every Wednesday night for about an hour and a half, two hours. A whiz, I can't attend that. I, my kid's got hockey or something. I don't know. You don't have to attend. Everything is recorded for you. Uh, you get a primary live trade brief every Tuesday morning for two hours with me. I just showed you the primary live trade brief model portfolio. Urgent alert service. It's not live trading, but it's me sending out a text alert and the screenshots like I just did. Well, I have to send out the trade here in a couple seconds. The advanced trade alert and live trade brief service Thursday morning at 9 a.m. with our volatility arbitrage trader. His name is Doug Robertson. <clears throat> he ran a $500 million portfolio right down the street from me in Chicago. 500-pound head. And finally, under the offensive track, you get weekly options. Now, like I said, weekly options are literally afterburner trading, folks. They, uh, they for the past couple, for seven weeks in a row, we had winning op, winning weekly options trades for just under uh, 20 grand. Uh, and then last week I, I had an iron condor on the S&P 500 that was stupid trying to pick a top in this market uh, and the top of the iron condor got blown out so got a kick in the gut on that one uh, that brought us down to maybe 18 grand uh, for the past seven weeks okay that's the offensive track the defensive track is everything I just said except instead of weekly options you get the accelerated retirement service because we have a, we've had a lot of people at these events go I don't want to trade weekly options yet that sounds a little nuts um, okay then guess what if it sounds a little nuts and you're a little bit more conservative go with the accelerated retirement session okay that's every Wednesday uh, at one o'clock so it's me here in a couple hours okay and then finally uh, you can do what's called max afterburner. That's everything. Everything we do here uh, at Top Gun Options, including weekly options and accelerated retirement. Okay, so that's those are the three tracks there, folks. Okay, uh, there's the monthly prices in the blue blo blue blocks. Say that ten times fast, uh, or you can save a lot of money with an annual subscription uh, right underneath it. Okay, 
there's just our performance on there. Here's a description of uh, everything I just said. So maybe I didn't have to say that. Uh, so here's the offensive, defensive, everything you get. Uh, here's the course uh, that you get access to. You get all the recordings and everything, calendars, iron condors, implied volatility trades, exits. A lot of people said this when I talked about it. They have problems with what? Exits and adjustments. You're going to get a whole session, two-hour session, on how to adjust a trade and when to exit. Um, good stuff. The Greeks, vertical spreads. This is a great, great uh, deal there. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns or uh, oh, by the ways or anything like that, you can shoot us an email, support at topgunoptions.com, or you can give our client advisor a call, Annie Santos. Uh, she's where I get all my Brazilian intelligence. <laughs> she's from uh, Recife, Brazil, uh, and uh, just an absolute uh, hell of a person and uh, knows a lot about uh, Brazil. Her family still lives down in Brazil, so I get all the secret intel. Uh, and her number is 754-300-1084. And she can also help you out, uh, you know, selecting a package or, or any of that uh, stuff, okay? She can... Um, Hey, you know, I want this or that, or can I do weekly options? And she'll she'll find the package that's right for you. Again, the URL is go.topgunoptions.com slash FTM. All right, let me get back to the uh, the questions here. Um, excellent five stars. Yes, exactly. Yep, Manu. Uh, Albert, I know uh, I met Douglas uh, Petterfeen years ago in Chicago. I think IB is a uh, a good platform. Um, yeah. uh, Benoit, uh, so you never buy plain calls or puts? Almost never. Almost never. Do I? Have I? Yes, yes. Benoit, I, uh, I, between you and me, I'm cheap. Why would I buy a call or a put when you could sell another one and help finance it. Unless you just think something has absolute upside or downside, right? If it <laughs> if 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 you think something's going to a trillion, just buy the damn calls. I get it. Uh, because selling selling a call or selling a put to finance it does cap your upside, I get it. But rarely have I seen a ginormous move. I, I've done it around earnings or maybe heard something over a water cooler type of thing, but I just I just don't do it. Uh, Wiz, Obama told Yellen to be dovish until the election so he won't get blamed for the market drop. Yes. Well, Buck, I, I, I might agree with the politics, but I don't think that's going to happen. As we saw last or a week and a half ago when those two Fed lieutenants said, hey, we might raise in June. The market did what? We kind of rolled around on the floor a little bit and kicked and stomped, and then we started uh, going up. Nina, come back to Chicago. <laughs> it's too cold, Nina. Uh, I might be up there in July uh, for a speech, but uh, when I when I'd have to walk from the train station uh, from Union Station to the Board of Trade in February, I wanted to put a bullet in my head. So I I, I can't, Nina. Maybe to visit. We'll, we'll talk. Uh, Jeff, the alert service and portfolio positions are all options-based trades. Correct, Jeff. All what we do here at, at Topkin Options is is trade options. I teach you how to trade equity options. You bet. What do you do in a low vol environment? Uh, near. Well, you get bullish, uh, but you also in a low vol environment near. What do you do? You hedge. Okay, you hedge. Uh, hopefully, you wrote this down near. When vol is cheap, you buy it. When it's expensive, you sell it. Right? Also, near, will you roll it down if you need to adjust? Yes, that's one of the things you got to sign up for because I'm almost out of time here. Um, I send out the what I'm going to do. Actually, when I put the trade on, I send out what I'm going to do. But uh, again, I, I need to do a little bit. I hate this part of all of this. I'd rather talk about trading and for eight hours, uh, but my marketing folks are in the other office waving at me like that. Talk about you know our services, whatever. Um, Johnny, no, that's not necessarily uh, the normal risk to reward ratio for a spread. Um, but I don't look at risk to reward ratios all the time. I look at everything, Johnny. I look at the at the money volatility uh, for the probability. I look at the risk to reward, but I use my brain more importantly. 
the risk to reward, if it's a layup because of my strategic mindset, I still might do it even though the risk to reward is small. Well, Wiz, uh, every once in a blue moon you're going to get hit by that missile. Well, guess what? That was my day to die then. Okay. Uh, great questions, folks. I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I can't answer all of these, which kind of sucks for me. Uh, but head to go.topgunoptions.com slash FTM. Dan uh, did a great job of throwing that in the, in the box for me. Uh, slash FTM means full throttle monthly. Uh, and, uh, and I'll answer all your questions because you're going to be here. We've had people here for six years at Top Gun Options since we were founded. So uh, they stay not because they didn't learn options. They stay for the uh, trade ideas and the camaraderie. Okay. So again, like I said, you can give us a call at 754-300-1084. Or shoot us an email support at topgunoptions.com. Okay, so I gotta run, folks. Uh, happy hunting. Make sure you hedge. I gotta get uh, ready for my one o'clock live trading session here for my subscribers. So I'm gonna throw it back to Dan, and I'm gonna thank Dan and all the uh, the folks here at Winvesting. A hell of a hell of a uh, a company. I I definitely poke around at what they do because they got a lot of 500 pound heads running around as well. And I'll make room for the uh, the next presenter. So God bless. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge, and I will uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks for having me, Dan, and I appreciate it.